Hey there viewers, my name is Trinsky and welcome back to another DCSS Sunday. Today we're of course jumping back into the usual trying to get a win with every species in the game and we've been on deep hill for a little bit here. It's been a bit of a rough shot to say the least, but we had some fortunate progress in the last little bit. We're doing pretty well with Pelps the Poison Elementalist, so hopefully we can get through in one piece. We've even gotten some pretty good loot luck so far, but not too good either. I don't feel like we've cursed our run, so it's the perfect little balance point at the very least. Without further ado, let's hop right into it, shall we? Hey, Railbird, how's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Safe at you as well. We got this? I hope so. I hope so. We'll give it our best shot at the very least, no? But first things first, we have to decide where we wish to go. We've just finished clearing out Lair as deep as we wish to go for the moment here. We could start heading into our, one of our S branches right away. The sketch part about that is that it would have to be Shoals pretty much because so much of our damage output at the moment is poison based. The so snake is gonna be a bit of a rough shot, but I don't know if we're ready for Shoals. We have 78 health, 17 AC, Javelin ears are gonna hurt real bad hitting us like a truck so i think i want to go back out to the dungeon the only issue there of course is that jorgren is where we left off on d12 and it was looking a little bit scary here there is also orc as well and i'm trying to remember why we retreated i think it was just because there were a few orcs around the stairs so we would be taking a decent bit of damage Let's take a peek, shall we? You finish dungeon, but orc is a good idea, and Railbird says orc as well. Yeah, I think so, unless there's something terrifying here that I'm forgetting about. But at the time when we first went down, I believe we were worried about getting one shot, or at least, you know, down to half health on the down step, and then retreating would kill us. But we're actually in an okay spot right now, so let's head back down, shall we? And definitely just want to take some of you friends upstairs. Beauty. Oof, yeah, that does hurt with all the might effects going on. But let's take a quick peek here. We can Toxic Radiance. And fortunately, we can largely just run away and the warrior will die. Fantastic. And then just this son of a gun we should be able to take. It's already closer than I'd like, but there we go. No problems whatsoever. I'm also not sure why we didn't finish this floor. Oh, right. I believe that there was a zombie weaver that was giving us a lot of trouble. Again, the first time we kind of came down this way, at least we have Sandblast now to help us take care of some of those undead minions. So while we're at it, let's just finish exploring this floor as well, shall we? I guess we didn't do a quick check up on our skills. I know we were training the yeah, conjurations and a little bit of armor here. We might want a bit more fighting just to get that health total looking a little bit better. And I really want to get some more spells added to our spell books so that we have some reason to be training elsewhere here. Even conjurations that we're training right now. I mean, we're getting pretty close. I guess Fulman Prism has a pretty high ceiling, so that's why we're training it so high. Ought to see. Man, this entire place all <laughs> stops working in trunk. Right? Yeah, stepping away from monsters becomes uh, its own kind of trial of sorts and a bit of a rough shot. Ah, there was also a skeletal warrior band, was there? Don't love that. Definitely don't love that. They don't see me now, so I'm going to walk away a bit. Nightmare can follow, that's fine. Or I always forget, the shadow, that's what they're called. And we can swap over to see invisible so they don't get the extra little bit of damage against us. And not too bad. We also, I guess, shouldn't really be using the Ring of Positive Energy itself because we did get this other artifact ring that does the same thing, only better. So let's swap out to that now before I forget, shall we? I think we can take on a Skeletal Warrior, but I'm ready to regret all my decisions in life. <laughs> At least we have IMB to kind of juggle the son of a gun just a wee bit here. And in fact, we can also throw out Fulminant Prism here. 
believe it takes two turns to trigger, so that should just about do it. Fantastic. And one more time now. Yeah. Perfect. Not too shabby, all, all in all here. Yeah, no to undead for now. Yeah, it's a bit of a rough spot. I mean, the nice thing about that is that in the newer versions of the game, we've kind of seen both sides of the trunk update, so we wouldn't have been able to step away from the orcs quite as easily, but not quite as many undead things that will completely ruin our poison slants. So that kind of is a good display of both ends of the spectrum. And doesn't LRD wreck those? It does indeed. I just completely forgot that we even had that. Would you look at that? Any skeleton, we can just completely blast those brittle bones, no problems. Thanks for the reminder, Jared. I appreciate it. Not too shabby. Now I think we can just head back into work and start exploring a little more liberally here. Fantastic. This will be a nice spot to just top off on some experience, maybe find some good stuff, especially if we are able to su uh, successfully, can't talk at all, uh, clear orc too and see some good shops. Could find, I mean, a file of floods would allow us to fight through Jorgren without nearly as much uh, fear, I guess. <laughs> it's the most accurate representation. But we'll have to see what we find over the next little bit here. And hey, Brain, how's it going? Hope your weekend is going well here as it's coming to a close this beautiful Sunday evening. At least evening for me. And you can see that the uh, Ogleb's Toxic Radiance is doing absolute wonders in Orc. Makes this section of the game quite lovely to go through. It'd be even better if we had Ignite Poison, but we won't get too greedy now, will we? Probably should just try to blast this uh, knight a little bit here. I was debating taking the back step and trying to uh, bring them upstairs, but I decided that, that was probably slightly riskier than I felt comfortable with. This warg, on the other hand, can definitely do so. And maybe we find a bookstore, exactly. That would also be huge, especially if it has previously mentioned Ignite Poison in it, because that would really... Uh, kick our game up a notch and allow us to do a lot of things, though I'm also hopeful that we'll find uh, a spell that allows us to think more towards the future than just solutions at the moment. So Ignite Poison, beautiful for right now, but something like Ignition would be lovely for the future, gives us something to look forward to, or especially what I desperately want, actually now that I think about it for but a mere moment, is Statue Form. Rounding out our health total a little bit, giving us a bit more defensive capabilities in general across the board. It will be a bit rough to lose the intelligence buff that we're getting off of our chest piece, because if you recall, our scale mail has this plus seven to int, so that's pretty huge for our spell power. But it would definitely be worth the trade off. Or at least I think so. We'll have to check if and when that comes to pass, how our, our spells fare in the exchange, but I'm sure. Based on how much I have always loved statue form in the past, it'll probably be a beneficial uh, scenario here. The Toxic Radiance and Ignite Poison screen clears, it's absolutely beautiful. And it's useful even until the end of the game, because Draconian packs remain very vulnerable to poison. Even all the way into, into Zot. Even though, to be fair, a lot of the other monsters that will come across that, that stage don't care quite so much. Definitely a nice thing. And worst case, Vemet will probably provide, yes, definitely for the destruction spell sides of things, so that's why we don't have to worry too much about that. And I'd almost rather get the utility of statue form under our belt here. Being slightly cautious of the high priest, but I think that's enough poison to kill them. Fantastic. Only slightly terrifying, but <laughs> when are they not? Any high damage smiter that has a lot of summons as well becomes a real pain in the butt. But fortunately not quite so much ambition now. Is Vehement offering us anything fun? I believe it's freezing cloud at the moment. Which I mean, even with no training in ice or air, we do almost have castable. The only issue with freezing cloud is that a decent number of monsters that are 
vulner or not vulnerable, rather resistant to it, or also resistant to poison, being mostly undead creatures. But, of course, the flip side of that is that it would potentially allow us to go into snake a little bit sooner because we'd have some source of damage for taking out snakes, slowing them down further as well, any of the reptiles really. We only have seven spell levels at the moment, and have we found amnesia? Yes, we're carrying two amnesia scrolls on us. You know what, I think I will learn this just in case we don't find anything else to kind of shore up our offensive capabilities in, over the next while here. We may as well build in just a wee bit of insurance and see how that turns out for us. But as for now, we can just sit pretty and be exceptionally happy with OTR here. Definitely one of the more satisfying spells in the game just because of the sheer destructive capabilities across entire crowds of enemies. All the main like AoE spells in this game are always satisfying to use, of course. Let's take our new knight friend back a bit and just pl slow play this a wee bit, trying to make sure we don't get caught out in something too sketchy scenario-wise. Should be just about good to go here. I say before even reaching the final vault area, which is where things will truly get terrifying, but I'm sure we'll be just fine. It's not like things have ever turned out horribly in the past for us on Deep Elves or anything like that. For now, we'll just keep poisoning our way through without too much concern. Hello, my friends. Can break you off from the crowds here real quick. That would be lovely. I'm actually almost curious now that I think about it for another moment. With the new changes, Chapriados doesn't necessarily get better, but does it almost balance out more? Because with the... The new energy changes, you don't want to be stepping away from monsters when you're right next to them. And I mean, with Che, you just never want to do that. Because you're way too slow and you're just going to take all the damage in the world as you try and retreat. So it at least kind of complements the playstyle of Che, so that's kind of interesting. And thank you so much, uh, Jord or Gord, for the follow. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on this lovely adventure today and already helping us out with uh, some good advice, I appreciate it. Are you poison resistant or... No, you are just out of sight for the majority of the poisoning? That sounds good to me. Couple of smites coming down. Less than ideal, but shouldn't be the end of the world. Trying to balance this carefully because we will take a heck of a lot of damage before we even know it here if we're not careful. Fortunately that IMB to just shove enemies off of us is always a good emergency measure. In fact, that's something that makes me a little bit more pleased with the idea that we'll be heading to Snake. Normally Snake is absolutely terrifying, but if you're able to at least get rid of constrictors and just shove them away from you at full force, then it usually makes things at least a wee bit easier to, uh, to manage. And both these priests are just about dead, so I think it will push our luck just a wee bit. Fantastic. I'm hoping I don't regret that. I should actually check. I don't fully remember the Sorcerer Handbook right now. Do they have Paralyze? They might have Paralyze, and we do not have the willpower to, uh, to deal with that at the moment, so definitely something that we should keep in the back of our heads. And yes, I definitely did not want to sandblast myself. Thank you, game, for recognizing that fact. <laughs> It'd be a very serious problem if there wasn't that. Uh, that would be overly suicidal footnote that we get because I will oftentimes try and cast spells before enemies come in range. Whoopsie daisies. But okie dokie, some nice potions here for sure. I want to mark the resistance and haste as potential pickups for the future. We only have one curing, so that also is a good target. We have not ID'd brilliance. So I might do that, and I'll just buy the Degeneration Potion right off the bat here. 14 gold for free identification. Not too shabby. Ooh, we have so many of those too. Let's just drop those on the floor before I forget. And Heal Wounds is still unknown. Oh, I didn't actually realize. I thought that we had accidentally like blind chugged one at the start of the run. 
How about that? We'll almost definitely end up buying it, but we'll still just mark it for now. Scrolls of blinking have not been ID'd, so I definitely will uh, snap grab this, I think. And I guess we can take a look in this last shop. Scroll of summoning. It looks like we'll just be able to afford everything that we kind of want here, so... Let's just buy some good scrolls. Unfortunately, it's none of the shops that we were kind of hoping to find down here, but definitely good enough for me. And I can be happy to pick up a bunch of these bad boys. So we have two summoning. That was our only blink scroll from the shop. Oof, that's that's a rough one, but should be okay. I'm debating buying these identify. I guess we might as well just get a bunch of these things in our inventory sorted. And let's give it a shot, shall we? Start with the scrolls. Noise is actually nice to find just because it can free up a space. I'm always tempted to carry them around to try and get in a fancy maneuver where we try and, you know, call enemies to us without needing an alarm trap to step on. But at the end of the day, I'll probably just tell myself that throughout the entirety of the run and in the end, not ever make use of that capability if I know myself by this stage. But I can still buy a bunch of these fantastic little potions here or there. I think I will buy the resistance just so that we can chug those in an emergency. Okie dokie. I guess that's that. So not the not necessarily the dream orc that we were hoping and wishing for, but can't complain too much because it still gets us a decent ways along in our journey. I was debating taking the Orc Knight downstairs and then remembered that we do have IMB, so let's just stay here and make sure our poison cleans up all the rest of the crew real quick. And we can always pop down for the healing itself. Scrolls of ID, but why would we need to waste gold on ID? Just blind read, quaff the best consumable first try every time. <laughs> Good plebs. Just drink the right potion, forehead. You're not wrong. Especially with the way that I usually play the game, I'm surprised that we have anything identified by this stage, because normally, we'd still be fumbling in the dark, I'm sure. If I had my own way and didn't have some lovely folks to remind me of the, the basic necessities in life. <laughs> Okie dokie. Doesn't look like too much going on in this floor. It's still some nice experience, so happy to, to clear the way. But, oh geez, an orc priest I might be slightly cautious of how we handle this. Never mind, no worries whatsoever. And there we have it. That is officially done with the orc side of things. Again, unfortunately not necessarily giving us a whole lot of rope to work with moving forward, but we still have a bit to go here. So let's head back out to the regular dungeon, shall we? And make sure that we don't go all the way down to D12. And also make sure that we actually use LRD on our skeleton friend this time. So much better. Thanks again for that reminder. And you know what, we'll just manually go the rest of the way. We're pretty close. Oh, really? We did not explore all of D10. Well, now's probably a decent time to do so. I'm trying to remember what might have been catching us up here and why we left. I'm worried that it may become relevant, but I'm also mixing up a bunch of runs in my head. This wasn't the one with the, the Komodo dragon, right? I remember traversing some fancy water areas with the Komodo, but turns out, no, it was more so that we couldn't cross the deep water, so that explains things. <laughs> but that is A-OK. -okay. We'll just head on down to D11 here, and then try the new unexplored stairwell. So if we take a peek, this is where Jorgren was, I believe. Indeed. There he is, the son of a gun. Definitely don't really want to get in this fight at the moment. That Petrify is looking a little too nasty, and that Iron Shot can two-shot us. So that's less than ideal, at the very least. But we can head down here, and potentially just try and find a stairwell that we can immediately head down. What was I using to kill Hydras in Lair? Probably Prism and IMB, right? And LRD as well when they're next to a wall, but unfortunately not so much of an option in this situation here. 
but we can drop down a couple of these fulminate prisms and we should be good overall to, uh, to get the job done. And there we go, managed to kill them just off screen. There was also this pack of vampire mosquitoes that we were concerned about at the time because we only had poison back then. We're doing slightly better this time. Hello, Jorkrin. Was I being a bit too loud here? Are you coming to shut down the party? Yeah, almost no shot do I take that fight successfully. So, let's just run, run away. And now we can head to this stair, I guess, since we seem to have rustled Jorgren out from their rest up in this area. And I'm hoping that this time we A, won't have to immediately resort to Fulminant Prisms because they are a bit noisy, but B, I was hoping to find a staircase, which we immediately did, so I'll probably just end up skipping this floor for now. The danger there, of course, is that we may or may not accidentally find ourselves coming face to face with Jorgren on, you know, retreating from an enemy or something like that. But ideally, we'll just be able to uh, ignore our problems for now until we're a little bit better suited to deal with them face to face. So let's do so. Let's just head down, shall we? Ah, hello, my Ogier friend. Should be able to just keep our distance and allow the poison to do Lord's good work there. Fantastic stuff. Don't believe we've been offered a new spell? Not yet, unfortunately. Ah. A vampire. 26% chance to confuse is not horrible. Only 33 health is very manageable. Do I have any quieter spells that I could kill you with? Pretty much just Sandblast. I mean, one thing I think I will do, you have no fire or poison. So we can switch over to see Invisible to just kind of preempt that. And if you could come this way, my vampire friend, we should be able to take you out without too much trouble. Fantastic. We'll make sure to switch those rings back. The Ring of Secrets just being a little bit too incredible to let by the wayside. And... Oh, right. You do not get poisoned. But that should be fine. I think we're far enough away from our stairs now that I don't mind making a little bit more noise. And if we end up retreating, we at least won't lead all the enemies back to our... What is currently our only way in and out of the level. Always have to be slightly cautious of that just so we don't get hemmed in. I would prefer not to have to search floor 11 or floor 12 again, trying to find another stairway without running into Jorgren. That seems like a, a little bit of a nightmare, so avoid it if I can. Hello, my mummy friend. Again, the game just really wants us to fight everything that we have trouble facing. We'll just blow up a prism out of sight there. Ooh. And a death knight as well. Have to be very careful that we don't get damage reflected, so I want to stay away from using fulminant prisms here just so that... Oops. <laughs> Left myself real quick, but that's fine. Uh, but we definitely don't want to set down a fulminant prism just to have the death knight do the damage rebound, you know, right before the turn it's going to explode. That seems like a little bit of a nightmare, so if we can avoid that, that's fantastic. And holy moly, we just got statue form. I mean, ask and the game will deliver. That is fantastic. So now we can start immediately training up for this. We already have a little bit of earth magic, not quite enough though, so that will be part of the equation. And how high do I bring you? Even a 12 is fine. We'll probably want to use something like Iron Shot if we get it in the future as well. So that would be lovely. And Transmutations can come on and bring that up to like an 8 should happen relatively, uh, relatively quickly at this stage in the game. Conjurations will still bring up to 16 while we're here. Not exceptionally desperate for that statue form. We just kind of would like it for the future. Ooh, I wish I could hit both of you. There we go, that's much better. And one more. Ooh, not quite, but getting real close. 
Ooh, but I'm out of magic. That's important. And the freezing wraith goes down the chute. Well, I guess that's fine. Takes four mana for IMB? It does. I think that might be one of our better bets here. Fantastic. It does get the kill. Otherwise, we would have been in a little bit of a sketchy situation. Probably nothing that we couldn't handle at the end of the day. But not exactly ideal. And let's see what this takes. 12 potions of heal wounds. So we will not be visiting a treasure trove this game. Fair enough. If you didn't want me getting treasures game, you should have just said so. You don't have to be so passive aggressive about it. But it is what it is. And we'll just keep her moving here. Hopefully that's the worst this level had to offer, was that little undead vault. What are all you friends doing here? Definitely see no need to, to start that fight at the moment, so we'll just run away. The best strategy for the most part in any DSS player's journey, but... Let us do this. I'm slightly concerned about that centaur warrior. Don't know what we ended up killing with our Fulmin Prisms there. Ideally, the warrior fell as well, and I'm assuming they did because they weren't the first one to catch up to us. They're the quickest of those critters. But I will definitely take whatever I can get here. Because those arrows definitely pack a bit of a punch. Ooh, and a kite shield of reflection. I mean, that definitely means it will want a better necklace at some point soon. I believe that magic regen is the only other amulet we've found. Let's do a quick check, though. Oh, right, there was this artifact one that, for sale that was unfortunately just not super useful for us. I don't love faith on Vehement. You're not really spending piety at all and slay doesn't matter too much. The strength minus four was one of the ones that was a deal breaker at the time, but now we have just a plethora of strength giving magical items on us, so it's a little bit better, but regardless, unnecessary. Magic regen, I don't care too much about, you know, immediately swapping to, it's not top priority in terms of mission statement here, but at least something to keep in mind for the future because we will most likely be switching over to using that kite shield at some point there's no huge rush especially with the shield changes that made it a little bit harder to wield or made them a little bit harder to wield when using magic hello there you are i don't like the corrosive nature of, of all of you friends but we should be all right overall here at the very least. Especially getting some kills always helps nicely for just refunding a lot of the magic. And you know, maybe I do actually want magic regen now that I think about it. We've definitely been short for the last few fights here. Might be nice. Something to think about at the very least. Definitely finish you off with an IMB, run back to our stairs to heal up, and just rest. Last trove you found asked for like seven blank scrolls. Big old nope on that one. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate um, find for the most part. Never do know how those uh, those vaults are going to turn out. Sometimes they're absolutely lovely. I mean, obviously, anytime you get one of the rune treasure vaults where you just have to show it the rune and you don't have to give up anything, that's just absolutely fantastic. But most of the time it's a trade that is either impossible for you to get it's something like 15 teleport scrolls and you've only seen three in your entire journey or it's something like heal wounds or blink that are just not quite worth the the cost of living there hello friends not the most ideal enemies to find after a shaft but not the end of the world either that's actually worse in a lot of ways, but at least we have this nice little corner to go around and just blast you a wee bit real quick. The issue, of course, is that we don't exactly have retreat space here, so we have to be a little bit cautious not to get caught out. 
reading a teleport on this level might be a bit rough in its own right, but there we go, never mind. We get a stairwell, and that's all you really need in life. Fantastic. The very least, we didn't immediately get shafted into, like, the entrance to depths and have to face off against, you know, a couple of fire giants or something, because that might have been a wee bit rougher, all in all. Oh, I definitely want to cast on the stone here. Did we kill the pyromancer? Apparently. Oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. Maybe one of the LRDs did it. I wasn't paying close enough attention to the logs, because I don't believe we got enough poison damage to do the trick. But I mean, I will definitely take it as we risk a little bit of a damage step there just to not get absolutely cornered. And then we should be A-OK, -okay, all in all. I was very nervous about jumping back into this character. It's always a bit tough when you're just returning to a character and you have to kind of reconfigure, get your sea legs under you, make sure that you're playing into their, their powers and their weaknesses. We've also seen that that Felchin we saw before is a plus 10 Felchin. That flame has nice resistances in terms of fire and cold and in plus 4. That's a decent little stat stick there. I think we'll run over. It does mean that we can drop the Staff of Cold. We are mostly carrying that around as a quick source of cold resistance. So that's fantastic. Staff of Earth can go for sure as well. And we can pick that up. I guess Zom's chest piece uh, might also be thrown in the trash at some point plus one robe it is willpower which don't get me wrong is something we desperately need but don't think it's quite worth it as for this i mean it's fire based and this brings us up to three pips of fire resistance so let's do it i think we can risk walking through oh geez Hello, Hydra Pal. I did not see you there. Let's just shove you back into the flames if we can. Or kill you. That works too. Fantastic. And what have we got? The plus nine Arbalist of Might. Triple positive energy. Vocal Blink. Electric Brand. Huh. That's a pretty nice Arbalist. I don't think we'll be using it on this character, especially since I do plan on eventually bringing that Kite Shield into rotation. But it at least got me thinking about it. Maybe if it was a bow, especially if it was like the storm bow or something, then you'd have my undivided attention on this character. But as for now, I think we're happy with where we're at and we'll just keep her moving. Oh, I should actually be a little more cautious of a wizard. What's our banishment chances here? 35? Oof, okay. At the very least, we can just try and kill you quickly with some LRDs and that went okay. Less than ideal, shall we say, though. And checking on our spells, statue form is now down to 36% failure rate, so it's real close. We're just on the cusp of greatness. In fact, how's that with our skills? We probably set both of these a little bit higher than necessary, but it'll give us some more ooh, spell power. Let's not turn off Earth, whoops. And onwards we go here. Now this seems like a lovely time for LRD. Anytime you can get multiple hits like this, make really efficient use of the mana costs, that is absolutely stellar. Especially since these Tengu are so um, evasive, makes it a little bit easier to deal with them. The Pyromancer should be done for the count. Oh, why? What happened to this Hydra? Why are you almost dead already, my friend? I mean, I'm very glad because when a uh, Hydra gets berserked by a... Uh... Something's wrong with my brain. It's always uh, a Wrath of Math. But with uh, a Moth of Wrath, they get berserked by that, then we're definitely in all sorts of troubles. So, have to thank our blessings there. Something horrible was apparently happening in the back end as we made our approach. Hello friends, you could all line up nice and orderly here. That should be just about fantastic for us. Guess we could OTR now that we have some non-green ugly things in the vicinity. But all in all, just not, not too concerned with this fight here. 
It's one of the few characters where without needing to change equipment, we just have kind of lovely resistances across the board. So that's always a bit of a relief, a nice uh, exhale in terms of the, the pressures. Let's get a new book that does have Petrify. It's a little bit late, I think. Normally, I would be super happy to find this on this sort of character, though, because it just kind of sits in nicely, pieces together with LRD and lets you take care of a lot of things like Hydras, for example. Very useful way to, uh, to take care of any Hydra problems in your life. But we can just thank our lucky stars that at the end of the day, I guess it just wasn't necessary. We were always in a pretty good spot. And it's always lovely when your LRDs are secretly hitting a second enemy that you don't even see. Can't complain whatsoever about that. Now that we actually have resistance to cold, that Wraith doesn't freak us out quite as much, so that's also lovely. And, okay, my Centaur pal. You could just hang out here for a bit. That would be lovely. I think this will kill you. Good. A little bit risky because shoving off a ranged enemy is just, you know, asking to get immediately shot in the face a couple of times, but I was fairly certain that we'd get at least close to killing and we're right by a nice wee bit of a corner here, so at the end of the day, maybe not quite as risky as it otherwise could have been. Now I would rather have the ugly thing to fight than the Tengu. So we take care of that buddy real quick. There we go, especially a red ugly thing, because again, we have all the fire resistance a young elf could ask for. Let's just get back on the road, shall we? Though I'm almost dreading this exact moment, because sometimes you don't really want to finish your area. You just want to put off having to go to Shoals or Snake and risk your life and limb needlessly. Yet here we are. So... I guess it's time to uh, to pick our poison. We could potentially do elf, but we don't have any willpower, so that gets a wee bit sketchy with a couple of the opponents we could find there. We at least have good elemental resistances, so we're pretty good across the board for all the kind of lesser elves. Hmm. We could take a peek somewhere though. Never too much of a of a risk which I say full well knowing that we may just run into like a wind drake in shoals, get shoved off the stairs and comboed into our own demise. But these are the risks we take in life. Let's let's hop on down, shall we? Hmm. I almost wish that there was some attention here. Definitely almost though, because at the end of the day, it's nice to have our area open. Okay, at the very least, we're pretty close to being able to lose the site to deep water, but Kraken being the first thing you run into in shoals, less than ideal, shall we say? Hey, you son of a gun. Can you even, will you attack us from there? No. Cheese the system. I almost don't want to do this because it's going to be noisy but I think I will. Oh my gosh. Wasn't that quite a change from, I think the last time we ran into a Kraken in this series, it was on a melee character that just got absolutely rolled for even attempting to, uh, to take that fight. So can't complain too much. Also, sorry to all these plants. Your unfortunate collateral damage in our attempts to stay alive here. Impaler, hey? Right as I'm kind of running out of magic. If we get barbed, I'll be less than chuffed about it, but you can always just run away the moment that happens so we're not risking too much damage one way or another. Quickly rest up to get all of our magic back and that solves a lot of our problems or at least uh, alleviates them to a certain degree which is all you can really ask for. Just keep poisoning everyone and shoving them away, and this is our life now. Oh, jeez, that hurt a lot more than expected. Huh. 
It's always interesting in this game where you come across an enemy a couple of times and you roll so well that you think, hey, Cyclops, no problems whatsoever. We've killed three or four of them now. Very recently too, just an orc, we were fighting a bunch. No problems. And so I was not at all concerned, but I should have been because, oh boy, two hard hitting rocks. It's just about all it takes to put us in a rough spot here. Hmm. We can try to heal, hope that they either don't throw or miss, and then we can freely retreat upstairs without needing to worry for our lives. Alternatively, what could we do? We don't have fog scrolls right now. We can double check here just in case my eyes are glossing over in the tiny icons of the inventory. No, unfortunately, no fog to uh to put up so i think i will just drink one heal wounds they in fact did not take a turn to throw at us so we can head back upstairs and get some r and r and go in for round two i guess this time being slightly more cautious though the moment we take even a single hit is when i'll probably start the beating at the hasty retreat Unless we can get some Mephitic Cloud going, then that also makes our job a heck of a lot easier. Fantastic. Ah, but there's our first Javelinier. How about that? Just who I wanted to see. Not at all terrifying. Hokey dokey. So I guess similarly we could go for the Mephitic Cloud and hope we confuse. We don't get it on the Javelinier, which is unfortunate. Not even on turn two. But, and throw down one of these. Oh, and there we go. Now we get the, the confusion. Oh, geez Louise. How is the damage calculated for ranged weapons like that? Is it max damage on the Cyclops plus the large rock damage? I do believe so. If we pop over to one of these, each of these kind of throwing piece equipment does have this base damage. So yes, I think the total that they could hit is both those together. So it's at 35 damage plus, I can't remember large rocks off the top of my head but they are too much damage shall we say let's take a peek it's like 20 oh no it doesn't actually say on the large rocks huh well that's kind of strange so much of this game has been opened up where they made it more transparent and you can readily see most damage numbers might have to look that up at a later date just to to clarify and double check because i am curious <laughs> 